Hello everyone, in this uh, video we're going to discuss the difference between nominal and effective interest rate. Let's start with this simple example. Suppose a $500 were deposited in a bank savings account and the bank's interest policy is 6% compounded quarterly. How much money would be in the account at the end of first year? So the two things to start with. First of all, the 6% interest, that is an annual rate. And whenever it's not mentioned, the assumption is that the rate is annual rate. The second important point, which is the key point of this example, is that the compounding occurs every quarter. So the money that you deposit in the account gets compounded every three months, which is a quarter. So the interest period is three months long. And in a year, we have four interest periods, four quarters. Interest rate per interest period is shown with I. And uh, in this case, I would be 6%, which is the annual rate, divided by four sub-periods that we have within a year. So it's 1.5% per quarter, right? The number of interest periods that we have within a year, that is four. Now, we want to calculate how much money would be in the account at the end of first year. That means F, which is the future value at the end of first year. And that's why we're going to use this uh, familiar uh, formula here to compute F. So F is equal to P times 1 plus I to N. P is the money that we deposited, so it's $500, 1 plus. I, we found it here, 1.5%. So divide it by 100 to 4. So that means every quarter... I'm gaining 1.5% interest, and there are four uh, quarters. As long as I and N are consistent with each other, we're always good. In this case, I is the quarterly interest, and N is number of quarters. In the case of yearly, they have to be consistent and so forth. They have to match. So in this case, F would be equal to 500 30 uh, and 68 cents. So that's the future value at the end of first year. So let's talk about nominal annual interest rate versus effective. Nominal annual interest rate is, which we show that with R, is the annual interest rate without considering the effect of compounding. Effective annual interest rate, on the other hand, which we show that with I sub A, is the annual rate taking into account the effect of any compounding during the year. So if there is any compounding occurring within a year, like the example we, we just looked at, every quarter, or could be every month, every week, every day, then the effective interest rate and the nominal interest rate would not be equal because there is a compounding occurring within a year, therefore the effective rate would be different. How to compute effective rate? This is the formula to compute effective rate as a function of nominal rate. M is the number of compounding subperiods within a year. So if the compounding occurring every quarter, then M is equal to 4. If, it's every, if compounding is every month, then M is 12. If it's weekly, M is 52, and so forth, depending on whatever the compounding structure is. And R over M, we can write it at, as I, and I is effective interest rate per compounding sub-period, which is R over M. So, the formula that we're going to use to uh, convert nominal rate to effective is going to be this formula. 
where you have R, M, and you calculate the effective rate based on those. Let's use the example that we had here, the 6% compounded quarterly and 1.5%, uh, right? So if we want to calculate the effective interest rate of that problem, what would that be? 1 plus R over M. In that case, R was 6%. That was the yearly rate. And M is 4 because compounding occurring every uh, quarter. So if you calculate the effective rate, you would see that it's 6.136%, which is a little higher than 6%, which was the nominal rate. So in that case, 6% was the nominal rate and 6.136 is the effective rate. Effective rate is always greater than nominal case or equal to. So that's how we calculate effective rate. Let's look at another example. Here says, if a credit card charges 1.5% interest every month, what are the nominal and effective interest rates per year? Well, the nominal is when there is no, when we're not considering the effect of compounding. If we don't consider that the nominal rate, which we call it R, is going to be 1.5% simply times 12, which is the number of months we, within a year. And that's 18%. But because compounding occurs every month, that's the uh, implication of this problem saying a credit card charges 1.5% interest every month. That means the interest gets compounded every month. In that case, the effective rate is going to be a little higher. Effective annual rate which we call it I sub A, would be equal to 1 plus R over M raised to M uh, minus 1, right? So in that case, would be 1 plus 18% divided by 12 to 12 minus 1. And if you do the math here, you would get to 19.56%. Again, a little higher than the nominal rate because of the compounding. So that's how you compute effective annual interest rate given the nominal rate and the compounding structure. Some of the important points here first is the case of continuous compounding. In that case, mean, that means the compounding occurs every millisecond. You know, every moment the interest is getting compounded. So that's a theoretical situation. Typically, in, re in reality, compounding structure is daily. You know, when you're looking at loans and savings accounts in practice is daily. But if you want to know what is the upper bound of effective rate, and that's when continuous compounding happens. Every millisecond is compounding. In that case, computing the effective rate given the nominal rate would be uh, based on this formula. That's only for continuous compounding. Another, another important point to talk about is that when the compounding is annually, when within a year no compounding occurs, it's just annually, in that case nominal interest rate equals the effective interest rate. They're just equal because uh, no compounding occurs within a year. That's all we had uh, for uh, effective versus nominal interest rate.